welcome to the Crypto Not Podcast. My name is Mark Storrs, and as always, hanging out with me here in the crypto studio, Robert Thomas Morphy II. It is nice to see you guys. Christopher Carnicelli. Hey. Welcome to Pumper Nickel Heaven. Yes, it is. Every week. Fresh bakery, <laughs> every week. I love it. The basement bakery. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell if it's more pungent or if we've just become like so used to it. Yeah. No, I mean, we might be inured to it a bit, but uh, but I do think there's a gnome bakery that is camouflaged oh. in our studio, and I think they love the pump. Okay. Who doesn't? Well, I mean, are they- They're making beef boats, rye boats, just whatever. pumping out the pump. Just pumping out the nice. pump hard. Probably look it up. Like, if you smell pumpernickel, it's like- Oh, we have, not good. Yeah, like, no, dude, we should it, look it up. Yeah, purple is it like, mold. Is, is it yeah, cancer? Yeah. Dude, or is it like? Is it like every time we come down here, it's like smelling toast. You having a stroke? We're having a collective stroke when we're down here together. Oh man, it's a slow stroke. What a way to go. It takes years. Uh, maybe the slow stroke. <laughs> the slow stroke penetrates <laughs> the shield. <laughs> it's a, uh, excellent Dune reference. All right, before we get started here, we have an announcement. We have a Discord event coming up. This is Friday, March twenty six, eight thirty. You mean May? Um, yep, sorry. No, you're, you're, you're correct. Yeah, it's, that's that's back in time. We're a Friday, year away. May 26th at 8.30 p.m. The Discord event has it as a.m. I got confused for a second. I totally fucked that up. 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Kryptonauts versus Humanoids. And this is the uh, Come Play the Kryptonauts versus Humanoids on Friday, May 26th at 8.30 p.m. Uh, PM EST. It's a game similar to the one that you may be familiar with. We're not going to give names because we don't want to get sued, uh, but with custom cards based off of phrases from the podcast. Players beware. It's definitely not safe for work. We suggest playing with your beverage of choice in hand. Nice. Oh, yeah. Okay. We've, we've all saucy and alcohol friendly. We've played this card game. Yes, before. we have, it's, and it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, it's super good. So that again, that is on the Patreon. That will be Friday, May twenty sixth. I cannot wait. At 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and New York time. And that is on the Discord, which, of course, is tied to your Patreon. We'll have some shout-outs coming at the end of the show. But this week, oh, episode 290. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're heading in. in there. TikTok, it's, baby. This is it. TikTok, TikTok. Oh, me and Rob had a discussion today about episode 300. So. Yes, I haven't discussed it with Chris yet. No, that, that will be coming soon. We're going to lock him in. We're just going to oh, <laughs> It's gonna yeah, be like you this. Know, yeah, don't even let me know. <laughs> yeah. I don't, even, I don't even give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it's anything That's like- That's what makes him so sexy. If it's anything like Mothman, I don't know, we might have to just, uh, I don't know, strap him down. Yeah, there's every- know. You know how the Virginia Odyssey started off as a guaranteed yeah. three? Yeah. Became a probable four- a definite five. Yep. It, it was heading oh, towards okay. six. I remember being like, dog, we can't yeah, we do can't. six. You, you got to stop. <laughs> episode 300 is actually episode 300, two, 306 or seven. Oh, it's going to be a multi-parter. Or, eight, or yeah. 70. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. I mean, maybe that's a bad decision. Maybe I should have made it contained, but it's such a cool story. It's going to be given its due diligence. Well, oh, I'm in. Rob told me three, so I'm thinking four. Yeah. I think I'm going to think four. Okay. We'll that's see. conservative. If I say three, think big. There you go. <laughs> Because no big. detail will be spared. <laughs> no. That's not how I research. No, no. But this week we're talking about monsters in our midst. It would have been called Monsters Among Us, but then everyone would have been disappointed when we didn't have a sweet crossover with Derek. I know, man. It's yeah, funny. that's true. Oh, man. We sh- I should have gotten Derek to read this for me. Like, just like, I'll call him, like, do a quick read the shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That I'm rich, sure silky has, baritone. He's got plenty of other things to do. But regardless, let's get started with... We share our world with monsters. Since a time immemorial, the human race has told legends of the feral fiends that occupy the most inhospitable corners of our collective world. But what if we coexist with these often carnivorous creatures, not at a distance, but in our day-to-day lives? What if some of these highly intelligent cryptids have refined their camouflage to such a degree that they've become indistinguishable from the rest of us? Compelling one to wonder if our coworkers, our neighbors, our lovers, or perhaps even our best friends are not who they appear to be. Monsters in our midst. I'm looking at the Jerks. both of you. I'm looking at the both of you. Well, you I'm might... definitely not. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I'm no. not even in front. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're, you're coming back. I, I can feel it. I can feel it. But now, Rob, I don't know about him. Yeah, why are you eyeballing me, yo? I don't know. Yeah, what's going on over here, Mr. Uh, Enfield Horror? You know I'm a fucking werewolf. I mean, that went without saying. Oh, That's dude. been established for decades. All right. All right. I, was gonna, all right, I mean, a non-transforming werewolf, a sadly impeded werewolf. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Well, there's, there's, right, there's no there's powers. A, no. No, <laughs> no, no transformations. No, no sweet, you know, midnight prowls. Nothing. But you guys are safe by default, so that's good. 
Are we? I don't know. Well, let's... I mean, maybe I'm a late onset werewolf. Okay, well, <laughs> uh, you're, just, you're just a non-wolf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. So you're just Rob. Just you it's in the title, but you're just not it. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> nice. All right, Robert. Let's get started. Whether you're from Oceania or Iceland, Sub-Saharan Africa or Scandinavia, India or the icy wastes of the Arctic Circle, despite being separated by vast distances and at times even more significant cultural divides, there is one thing that all peoples of the world share in common, an acceptance of the existence of inexplicable, inhuman, and decidedly enigmatic entities. In short, we all believe in monsters. Often relegated to the dark, desolate, shadow-shrouded fringes of our world, places like dense forests, muggy jungles, and murky swamps where children are taught to avoid and even adults fear to tread, the so-called rational minds of society have come to the conclusion that these bellicose beasts are the creation of fertile imaginations to fill the empty spaces in the zoological record that are legitimately occupied by all too real, if at the time still unidentified or at least mystified predators, and to discourage the young and unwary from traipsing too close to their slavering maws. But there are others who know all too well that the world is full of things to be afraid of most of which are recognized as real, and some that seem to seep from the misty realms of myth and legend. Our first case comes to us from Ghost Stories from the Res, an evidently no longer extant forum dedicated to the real paranormal encounters of Native Americans by virtue of the Beyond Creepy YouTube channel. So I first heard it on Beyond Creepy and then tracked it back. On a September 6th, 2019 posting titled Odd Entities that was on the Beyond Creepy YouTube channel, a factory worker by the name of Linda C. had a brief yet undeniably bizarre encounter as she left work on a rainy June evening sometime in 2019. According to her account, as Linda exited the factory and made her way across the dark, puddle-strewn parking lot, she noticed a maroon Cadillac parked next to her car. As she unlocked her door, Linda spied a young woman with dark, almost black, shoulder-length hair sitting behind the partially rain-spotted window in the passenger seat of the caddy. Linda, assuming that this was just a co-worker she had yet to meet, waved at the woman as she climbed into her car. Linda got situated behind the wheel, slipped the key into the ignition, and started the engine. As she was about to back out of the parking spot, she again glanced up at the dark-haired girl, but this time, something was amiss. Linda almost certainly felt her stomach drop and the blood rush to her head as she realized that the girl in the maroon car was no longer a human female, but a wolf-like being complete with full facial hair and a pointed canine muzzle. Dude, werewolves driving a maroon caddy? Riding. In Ri maroon, oh, riding yeah, in passenger a passenger seat. Caddy. Okay. Oh, all right. I like this already. Unable to fully process this sudden transformation, Linda backed out of her spot, taking pains to aim her car's headlights at the caddy and its quasi-canid occupant. She found that her eyes didn't lie, and she hadn't fallen prey to a trick of the light in the underlit parking lot. There before her, under the harsh glare of the headlights, was what could only be described as a wolf woman. Linda was convinced that she was not looking at a mask or some other form of chicanery, but a genuine werewolf. Within seconds of being caught in the evident act of transformation, the girl in the car, perhaps not even realizing that she had partially denaturized, suddenly ducked down into the seat and out of Linda's view. Like, oh, God! And just ducks. <laughs> oh, shit! I know. Oh, I changed! <laughs> like, d I'm assuming this this woman who turns into the werewolf, like, must know, like, oh, shit, my... My cover's been blown. Yeah. You know, like she must feel. Uh, like you see the look of something. Like, wouldn't it be funny if you man, didn't even is... know, like you didn't even feel the follicles or, or your face extending, if that's right. possible. Maybe it's just something that's so natural it did, didn't even occur to you. And then by the look in somebody else's eyes, you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, you're, like, like your flies down. You're yeah. like, oh, shit. <laughs> and your dick's out. <laughs> and it's got leprosy. And somebody's absolutely horrified. Oh, no. Leopard dick. No and, one talks then, about leopard dick And anymore. then you and you. I mean, there's reasons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's clearly reasons. And to hide it, you got to duck behind your car. All right, cool. Yes, All right. exactly. Moving on. Over the next few days, Linda attempted to discuss her strange sightings with coworkers, but they seemed unnaturally reticent to talk about what she'd seen. Though the heritage of her friends was not mentioned in the post, considering that the account first appeared on Ghost Stories from the Res forum, one might assume that Linda and her coworkers were of Native American extraction. 
If this is the case, then their taciturn reaction to her werewolf sighting may well be due to the fact that for many First Nations people, discussing a paranormal entity such as a skinwalker can serve not only to empower it, but also encourage the malevolent monster to manifest itself in their lives. But of course, this is only conjecture. I'm assuming ghost stories from the res, but who knows? Uh, yeah, Ooh. you know, I, unless they all knew like, oh shit, fucking Deb's a werewolf. Don't say nothing about it. Well, yeah, that could be it. Or there's like a secret cabal of werewolves working at the factory. <gasps> oh. Living, you know, in a community. Kind of like, you know, Joe Dante's The Howling, where they all had this like retreat up in the woods. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, D. Wallace Stone at the time got invited and you're, up. And you're not in the werewolf union, so they're like, we ain't fucking talking to you. Scab. Right. Yeah, oh. They call them respawn. Oh, wow. right. oh yeah. fleshy. Yeah. Where's your that's, fur? That's OG. Being called a scab or like yeah. a rat. You fucking rat. Wow. Yeah. No, rat dude. never dies. That's no, classic. I still like rat. That's been- I like Chris's version, rat bitch. That's my favorite. Yo, that's classic. <laughs> that's always my favorite. Yeah. I, I recently read something tonight from Chris where that was mentioned and they're rat bitch. I'm oh, like, yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> that's my fucking favorite. Oh, vintage. I use it often and I also I, I always cite Chris. I well, cite my to. sources. You have to. Rat Chris. <laughs> <laughs> rat Chris. <laughs> rat bitch. Chris Carnicelli. Okay, good. Moving on. Thanks. In a darkly intriguing turn, Linda mentioned in her post that there were additional details regarding the night that she saw the wolf woman that she felt neither safe nor comfortable talking about. One can only wonder what else occurred to make this woman feel so afraid. Was she, like so many others who claimed to have encountered sinister shape-shifting entities, followed home by the transforming terror, or did she perhaps fall victim to other paranormal pests like poltergeists? In the absence of facts, one can only wildly speculate and, as is often the case, imagine the worst. For her part, Linda summed up her sighting by claiming, quote, I know what I saw. I'm not crazy. No one wants to talk about it, so I just leave it alone. Which I guess makes sense. Okay. I mean, are we, are we that- sure she didn't just see like a dog? Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean been, could it have been a girl sure. in a car with a dog? Yeah, and yeah. like she ducked down to pick up something in the floor, and, the and dog, the dog po- who's on her yeah. lap laying down suddenly pops up to look around. Now, the way she describes it, it really seems like it's the girl turned dog. <laughs> That's what she. But yeah. you cannot rule out that possibility. A, a dog in a car? I, I, I mean, yeah. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> like the Chris goes no way. The most lo- dog in a car. We're like, just, are we sure? <laughs> For a second round, no, I were like, not sure, but... oh shit, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> dog in a car. No, we're not sure, Chris. Well, I mean. I mean, it could be a dog in a fucking car. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It could be. I mean, you know. I mean, that's a quick transformation. <sighs> yeah, that and is. then it's a shy dog who doesn't want to be seen or the owner was reaching down and found a milk bone and the dog reacted or excitedly and jumped had, down for it. had the dog up like, it's me, Mr. Puppy. Look how cute little, my puppy yeah, is, not puppy. realizing she's ruining a life. <laughs> yes, yeah, seriously. Right, I know. <laughs> I'm assuming though it has to be a pretty sizable dog because you're not going to see a person like, my God, it's a dashel hound. Like, oh, fuck, it's a giant German shepherd or something, True. you know? I mean, it's not a chihuahua. Yeah. Likely. Uh, that would be fucking adorable. Oh, where wawa <laughs> <laughs> Turned into a little chihuahua, a little Yakiro Taco Bell dude. I'd get uh, rebitten with another dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like no, immediately. I'm not, that's I not what I signed out Not for. doing that. And that would end up being like a mixed breed, so you'd still be half chihuahua. It would suck. Right, well, oh, what's like powers? A... Leaky eyes. <laughs> Sucking. <Jittery. laughs> dude, be a dachshund, dude. No. Weird, I weird body. Either. Yeah. yeah. Weird body. That's great. Yeah. Nice perks. What are the perks of the job? Weird body. I got a long body. I'm a long boy. Oh. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm just going to let that one ride. Let's do it. <laughs> Though werewolves, and by extension dogmen, have always been a part of popular paranormal lore, hybrid beasts of a scaly kind are less pervasive, but are nevertheless still reported with alarmingly increasing frequency. Our second case represents one such encounter. On Thursday, June 6, 2019, the website Phantoms and Monsters published an account by an experiencer with the initials CBT who claimed that an acquaintance of his had had a horrifying experience with a tourist who was not what he seemed. According to CB, CBT, I keep thinking CBD, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know, that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> At some point in 2012, he traveled back to the Dominican Republic to spend time with his parents. While there, he struck up quick friendships with numerous neighbors of both Dominican and Haitian extraction who spent their leisure time in the Sosua, I think I'm saying it right, a resort beach town in the Puerto Plata province. Here is an excerpt from his post, quote, 
One night, I was hanging out with my new friends, and one of them decided to tell us what had just happened to a girl who we all recognized from the area. She was a prostitute. However, in the Dominican Republic, that's a way of living for some women, so others know what they do for work. I'm assuming it means it's not stigmatized like it is in a lot of other cultures. Sure. Right. He continues. Anyway, the story went like this. The girl was working a couple of nights ago in a tourist area called Sosua. There she met a man from Europe who wanted to spend the night, who wanted her, excuse me, to spend the night with him, and she agreed. Prior to that, they were enjoying the night, drinking and partying at the bar. After drinking lots of beers, they left the bar and headed for the man's place. When they got to his place, they had sex multiple times and she fell asleep. But she woke up in the middle of the night because she did not want to stay until morning. However, she wanted to get paid for her services, understandably. There you go. So she looked around, but the man was not in bed with her. She thought he was testing her to see if she was a thief and would go through his things, so she decided to leave the bedroom and go looking for him. She heard the shower running and decided to go into the bathroom, end quote. Expecting no more than to see her client showering, the still naked young woman opened the bathroom door, never once suspecting that she was about to receive the shock of a lifetime. As she stepped into the room, the woman glanced down at a bizarre being laying in a pool of water in the bathtub, being pelted by droplets from the shower. At first, her mind reeled, likely unable to accept the vision before her. But within seconds, she realized that she was staring at the man she just had sex with. Only now, he wasn't merely a man. He was a strange, scaly synthesis of snake and human. Oh, dude, Cobra Commander from the G.I. Joe movie. Yes. Once a man. I'm going to use that reference every fucking time we talk about reptilians, goddamn. Makes sense. It's my favorite. Yeah. At the site of the... Oh, I'm sorry. I won't continue yet. <laughs> no. I, 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 just, I just love Chris. I just like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> As per G.I. Joe. Dude, it's, it's like, it's an agreeing, it's an, it's, it's an agreement of yes, Mark, and that there's a, a bit of disappointment in there. There was. I really like. <laughs> was once a man. <laughs> I love that fucking movie. I don't care how dumb it is. Anyway. You do a good Cobra Command. Cobra La, let's go. La, la, la. All right. Okay. At the sight of the Naga-like nightmare, this otherwise professional working girl had a complete meltdown. Quote, she was so terrified that she screamed and bolted out of the house, forgetting her clothes and ran all the way back to her house in the middle of the night naked. This girl I recognized, and she did not want to talk about the incident, and she was so traumatized that she feared telling the story to people. It's interesting to note, yet again, the reticence experiencers have in discussing their paranormal encounters. For many in the Western world, this buttoned-up demeanor seems to be the result of simple fear of public humiliation and the resulting stigmatizing ridicule. But in other cultures, this fear seems to run deeper to a more primal place, as if invoking the memory might somehow conjure the insidious entity back into existence. As for the young woman involved in this case, although there is no official or unofficial follow-up regarding her situation, one must imagine that following her tryst with the European tourist, she spent a harrowing span of time praying that she had not been impregnated by the repugnant reptoid. I didn't even think about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, Multiple man. sex acts. Dude, dude. Maybe protected, you hope. Maybe not. Oh, man. Yeah, and then you realize I fucked a lizard person. Yeah. But was it a person or was it was he just like a little tiny? Because it sounds like he's, for some reason in my head, he sounds small. I wish it was described. Ah, damn it. Like, like I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that Naga-like in the sense that it's sort of like the Medusa, the Ray Harryhausen version of it from 1980's Clash of the Titans, okay. where it's snake from the waist down, reptoid human oh, from the okay. waist up, sort of like a dude, snake centaur. Like Nemesis Enforcer. Yes. Yeah, okay. dude. I pictured actually the opposite, the fucking dreams, dreamscape. When he does the oh game. that cobra dude, uh, yeah, well, yeah. first off, we all know how I feel about animals with human faces. No bueno, no, yeah, no, no, no whatsoever. Yeah. And that one was pr- that one actually gave me nightmares. Not even it from seeing the movie, previous fuck. from seeing the previews on fucking HBO. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. so fucking that that I remember the actor too. He was also in the hidden though. I don't remember his name, but that he had like kind of a he was eerie in a lot face. of things, and he was always that always guy. a villain, always the bad guy, always the hench, and. uh and yeah, that cobra-headed nightmare is just fucking a perfectly apt way of putting it. What we don't know, I guess, is the thing. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it was a little of both. I mean, it yeah, could have that been. head and then, you know, the Medusa-type body, but a dude. Who knows? I mean, I would have ran naked, too, if I saw that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm out of there, dude. I'm... Oh, yeah. Pants-free in 23. <laughs> Scoot. <laughs> like, I ain't got time for this. Uh-uh. 
<laughs> no, Wang dangling all the way. Fuck yeah. that. Yeah, just hoping the guy you didn't impregnate the reptoid woman. Oh. Uh, if it switched around, yeah. uh, you're well, a gigolo. Well, if that's the case, you hope it's not the case, but it's not nearly as terrifying as being impregnated with. Yeah. Because that's like harboring a parasite in your body. Oh, this is creepy. All right, man. Bummer. Well, don't fuck snake people. You know, or do, I guess, if that's your thing. Yeah. Uh, no. no, I'm not here to judge. Don't, don't, don't make it your thing, maybe. I'm, I'm no. really not here to judge. Take no. bestiality. Don't make it your thing. Ah, see, that's a fine line. There, we'll that, discuss that. We'll that's discuss the thing, that. Though, is that line, you shouldn't get near it. If there's a fine line with something like that, don't get near it. Ah. Uh, nah, just stay back. You're we'll, fine. We'll debate yeah, that. Fine. We'll debate that. Mm, you know guys. I like fucking monsters. Guys. <laughs> Yeah, I got you both on the other side. Is this really? Um, I mean, obviously, we're on your side when it comes to the bestiality line. It, well, yes. But the, you know, the weird hybrid, you know, humanoid thing is right. maybe a different breed of cat, literally and figuratively. Maybe it's a cat woman or person. Okay. All right. It's right. okay. It's okay. We all. All right. Can we, we let's are, just table it and keep, keep, yeah, let's just, keep you know trucking. What? Let's Can keep, we keep on trucking? Let's keep this train moving. Okay. Our next account, once again from Ghost Stories from the Res via Beyond Creepy, was posted by a teenager named A. Gomez. According to Gomez, she and a group of male friends, all from the small yet paranormally packed town of Dulce, New Mexico, oh shit, what up? Were, like many typical high school students, partying in the isolated woods surrounding Dulce, sneaking brews, and generally killing time in what is, despite the UFOs and rumors of subterranean alien bases, still essentially a boring little berg in the middle of nowhere. And we all know what that's like, growing up in that circumstance, partying at the college trails, yeah, doing, yeah, doing uh, what we had to do at Bull Point, you know. Yeah, dude, going to the sand dunes, getting kicked out of cemeteries, trying to make out in fucking three steps. Oh, yeah. hell yeah. Well, that's in the middle three of downtown. Three steps? Yeah, make out of three steps. Yeah, I never Why tried to make you, out no, there. it's like in the middle of the it's city. It's literally You're really- You're sitting on the bench, it's man. It's literally four feet away from the police We just listed all these places that aren't in the city. You, you guys yeah. never went yeah, to Yeah, like remember downtown right in front of the police station trying to make out and getting busted? No. <laughs> you guys never made out with chicks at three steps? Or like, no. or in like State Street Mall? Uh, well, State Street Mall, yes, but that okay. was slightly that's, more isolated. Yes, that's kind of hidden. Yeah. All right, man. They had you, guys, you guys missed out the makeout session, whatever. I really didn't. I mean, if I you want to reschedule it, we can. It's fine. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's just way too open, dude. Yeah, it's really highly exposed. Back in the day, there was bushes. You want to wow. go by the river and make out? <laughs> you go in the middle of fucking downtown? <laughs> <laughs> Technically, right by the river. Just but. go make out in Wegmans. It's fine. Just sit in the front. Where the big door is anyway. All right. Okay. We'll table that. The teens who were presumably all classmates at Dulce High School, go Hawks. Yeah, that's right. Were likely of Chikoria Apache ancestry. Hope I said it right. Did my best. As according to the 2023 assessment by worldpopulationreview.com, exactly 89.2% of the town's population of nearly 2,600 souls were indigenous peoples. Dulce is also the Chikoria Apache Nation's reservation's sole community and is the home of the tribal headquarters. Therefore, the assumption that the kids were of Chikoria Apache ancestry, though never clarified in the account, may well prove to be essential to the story. According to Gomez's testimony, at about 2.30 a.m. on a cloudy night sometime in 2010, she and a group of guy friends had finished their impromptu party and were walking along the desolate wood-lined back road toward her car when she and her friends witnessed something that would haunt them for life. Gomez claimed that while the group was still some distance from her vehicle, one of her drunken friends, whom she had known since elementary school, excuse me, elementary school, I had to say that right, my bad. Oops. suddenly became belligerent and insisted that the young lady drop the rest of their friends off and accompany him home. Bad luck, bro. Yeah, mm. that's real creepy. Gomez refused the frankly unacceptable demand, at which point her buzzed buddy came out to his friends, so to speak. This revelation involved neither his gender nor sexual orientation, but something much less explicable. He claimed that he was a skinwalker and that he would transform if his highly objectionable advances were not reciprocated. Despite likely having been raised on tribal lore, Gomez and the rest of the guys could not help but chuckle at their drunken cohort's bizarre proclamation. Then, before any official mockery could begin, the group froze as a pair of headlights suddenly appeared on the horizon. Due to the late hour, Gomez assumed that it must be the cops and quickly hissed for her friends to duck into the shrub-smothered creek that ran along the road near the woods. 
Ducking behind the brush, the posse realized that Gomez's instincts had been spot on, and they waited, silent and motionless, as the police cruiser slipped by, none the wiser of their presence. After the patrol car vanished, the teens returned to the road and continued their journey. It was then that the moon slipped out from behind a thick bank of clouds, brightly illuminating the cracked asphalt, giving the kids a clear view of the unthinkable. Without warning, their drunk comrade dropped to the blacktop. At first, Gomez thought he had dropped something, but when he curled up into the fetal position, she quickly realized that he was in genuine agony. Unsure of what to do, the collected teens could only watch in abject horror as their childhood friend literally transformed in front of their eyes into the form of a massive black dog with a bushy tail. Huh. Yeah. I'd almost be like, dude, that sucks. <laughs> Like Almost. You're not Michael Jackson turning into a cool cat person and dancing with zombies in the street. You're a fucking dog with a weird tail. Wow. So you'd be the dick. I don't know, man. I think uh, I think the sheer uh, overwhelming weirdness. I mean, is he a fucking... cool? Is he a big fucking gnarly cool like two headed fucking? There's something crazy. He's got. His, his, his... You don't have to be like a you know a cerebus or whatever. How do you say it? Cere- just, not cerebrus. Fucking... Cerebro, yeah. whatever. If you just turn into a lab, I'm not going to be impressed. You don't have to be a three headed motherfucker to be right. impressive. You turn into a dog. I mean, what does he need to do? I don't know, man. Tap dance. <laughs> yeah, I know. I still, I still run. I don't give a shit. <laughs> you're you're out. Yeah, no. I, I, oh, I have a werewolf thing ever since I was little. Me too. So it's like it's even t- Michael Jackson's video terrifying. Okay. Yeah, no, that weird Puma terrifying. Wolf thing was yeah. terrifying. I mean, Bobcat, where yeah. Bobcat, <laughs> yeah, where Puma, <laughs> yeah, exa- yeah, yeah, not really a werewolf. I mean, he's he's he, he Poppins. He's just, he's a good boy. Oh my god, dude! American Werewolf in London. Jesus Christ! Yeah, they can turn into like full dog Wolfen. Yeah. I mean, that is what Gregory a Hines died. Is. Yeah, I mean, okay. Gregory Hines died in that movie. Died. I, I, R.I.P. Talk Gregory about Hines. tap dancing. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, who was there to mourn for Mr. Hines? We Not all in real were. life, but even in that movie, I was yeah. sad. Yeah. Oh, shit. All right. World's a sadder okay. place. It all is. Right? All right. Here we go. All right. Go. So he's a dog. Mark's not impressed. <laughs> Established. <laughs> Mark's yeah. a, is it the bushy tail that fucking You makes think it, it would be. You're the dog person. And yeah, I mean, I know. Good. I mean, it's cool, but I'm like, you're like, I'm a skinwalker. Blah, and all of a sudden, like, I'm a dog. Like, all right, dude. Fucking yeah. pump, pump your brakes there, dude. That's still awfully terrifying and very impressive. In real life, yes. Yeah. Yes. That's what sort. this is. Oh, okay. All Ostensibly. Right. Okay. We hope. Okay. All we'll right. see. Apparently, there were no signs of his clothes, no indication that just seconds earlier, there was a teenage boy who had inexplicably changed into a wild-eyed canine. But there it was, in all of its furry glory, staring back into the faces of its dumbfounded friends. Evidently, the boy dog was just as perturbed by this development as its classmates, as it wasted no time in charging back in the direction they'd come from on all fours. Could it be that in his drunken state, he'd lost control and accidentally revealed his sinister secret? Or was this a deliberate attempt to frighten his fellow students and in particular Gomez into capitulating to his grubby demands? Dude, you said it, dude, boy dog. All right. So maybe that's not the most impressive appellation I could have offered. And he did. I mean, boy dog. But he's not even like, I'm a fucking werewolf or whatever. He's just like, and fucking runs away. Oh, wow. Yeah, he just... I never said that sound. Jetted. He probably made that sound. He knows, he's a boy dog. Oh, Come on. he is a boy dog. Yeah. I mean... And he's he's obviously not very well behaved. He's being a fucking dirtbag to go, man. This is very... Oh, no, that's scummy. It's really... It's like low-end Twilight. Like, and, Team Jacob, like, minus six. And, yeah. like, his, his clothes are just, like, not there anymore. Yeah, that's a problem for me. Yeah. No, I, dude... I, Anytime thing. I see that and something does that and clothes are gone, I'm like, hold the fucking phone. Yeah, yes, wait. because then it becomes fully magical. But I, I must... <laughs> Say this. Okay. Apparently, there were no signs of his clothes. I say that because they made no mention of like the dog awkwardly ran in a pair of jeans and a leather jacket and a Ramones t shirt or whatever the fuck he was wearing. <laughs> this has like a misfit shirt yeah. on. Nor did it say that the clothes ripped and fell off of him, nor did it say yeah, that a pile of clothes remained. They didn't mention. So I say apparently there were no signs of his clothes, but that's literally the apparently. Okay. It doesn't, if I said there was no sign of clothes, then, then it would have been if, literally. We don't know for sure. If Lou Ferrigno taught us nothing is that clothes rip. Clothes rip. When you turn. But here's the thing. Like, how, how paranormal is paranormal? Like, at what level of high strangeness are you like, oh, he turned into a dog? Fully acceptable, genetically impossible by all standards. I mean, yes, like, tadpoles become frogs right. and, you know, caterpillars become butterflies. But it is an involved and t- lengthy process. It's not instantaneous. Mm-hmm. No higher mammals have ever manifested anything quite like it. So 
why can we accept that though? I understand Chris and your limitation in this, but would have a hard time with disappearing clothes. Like if we're talking like high science and high strangeness and absolute Man. batshit crazy, then the fuck. I mean, I guess the what's clothes, crazier, clothes disappearing or a human being turning into a fucking canine? I guess the clothes become a part of the. No, dog. I mean, yeah, they're both fucked. I mean, I'm just it's just like oh. I mean, otherwise, otherwise, yeah, the clothes are part of the. Like, what if it's under its skin? That's what, right? Like oh, attached to its oh, musculature. Yeah. You know how itchy that would be. Oh. Oh, what if it's wearing wool accidentally, oh, like a yeah, wool scarf, and it's yeah. now wrapped around your neck, Man. under your skin? I don't know. Touching all your nerves. A pair of Zubats. A pair of loose Zubats. Oh, if you're wearing Crocs, you're fucked. I mean, it could be some weird charm thing, too. It just looks like you have clothes on. Oh, it could be. Oh, there you go. Okay. It could be. There you go. All right, well, it's- Yeah, he's <laughs> always naked. Just gets to charm whatever outfit he wants. Yeah. Got a sweet, sweet pair of fucking dungarees. Some good wranglers, some rustlers. Younger re- rustlers. Yeah, some rustlers, wow. dude. Yeah. Some zips and rustlers. The huskies, boys. Oh, yeah, husky <laughs> section. That's where Rob's fat ass is shopping. That's, that's where, where I, I was, was, too. That's where I was, too. Hell, yeah. We were husky all... boys like monsters. Husky, husky boys for life, yo. <laughs> Meet us down at three steps and we'll make out. Yeah, we'll make out. You want a husky boy, baby? <laughs> Let's go down to <laughs> go down by the river. Where? want a husky boy, baby? Oh, God. Okay. It's... <laughs> it's there's a lot going on in my head with that. We just got. We got to go. We got to go. We got to right, keep going. On, next oh my paragraph. god, I'm so, so gross. Okay. Hey, husky boys are great. They're not gross. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking a husky boy baby. No, Whatever like... the answers may be, the rest of the party had the same instincts as the skinwalker, and as the sounds of its claws scratching the pavement faded into the distance, the remaining teens booked for Gomez's car. Though they had no way of getting into the auto without her keys, the unchivalrous crew left their sole female friend in the dust, much to her horror. Oh, they just bailed on fucking Gomez? Guys, none damn, of whom dude. are going to get laid now. Hope you're happy. No, you're a fucking coward, man. Yeah. God damn. Women and children first, dude. Always. Shit. You grab your friend by the arm. You help her run. You, If you're a really good friend, two of them grab you. So yeah. if you trip, they can lift you up like a toddler. Carry your knees in the air the rest of the way. Yeah. You help your friends out. Your slow friends, even if they're dudes. Yeah, you know, I mean, people that can't move very fast. And you know, sometimes toddlers, you know, if they're young enough, you can make more. There you go. Wow. Yeah. Jeez. There you go. Well, the beginning of a quiet place probably felt a lot different to you. <laughs> I can exchange it for a new one. <laughs> I can. It's only three months old. We got a lot of time here. Don't worry. We're fine. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm laughing. Gomez wrote. I was screaming, running, trying to catch up. We finally made it to my vehicle and we're all freaked out about what we just saw. We couldn't believe it because we had known this person since elementary school. Gomez wasted no time in flying out of the area. And instead of the planned agenda of dropping off all of her friends and driving home alone, the crew decided that there was safety in numbers and they all went back to Gomez's parents' house. Once there, the group retreated to her bedroom and presumably spent the rest of the night discussing what they had seen, what it meant regarding their sudden, shockingly expanded worldview, and more likely than not, if they were in jeopardy now that they knew their friend's terrible secret. Skinwalkers are notorious figures in Native American lore, often bent on revenge and tormenting those it deems to be an enemy. Did these unfortunate kids, following a fun night of teenage revelry, accidentally unleash the rage of an entire community deeply embedded within their own tiny hometown? What happened to Gomez and the other boys who witnessed this startling display? Did their lives eventually revert to the normal routines of small town living, or were they stalked by a sinister cabal of shapeshifters? Unfortunately, as there's been no follow-up to the story that I could find, it seems likely that all of these questions will remain unanswered. Dude, just a gang of dog boys. Really? They'll say, hey, what's up with the dog boys? It could they be like Lost Boys. Dog boys. Yeah, but they're dog boys. But they're skaters. They're fucking wild, wild right. boys in the streets of Dulce. But they just turn into dogs. Yeah, but dogs are predators of... You know, a very high stature. They're alpha predators. So they're, they're like, they can smell. They can stalk. They're intelligent. They're pack hunters. They've got wicked, you know, canine teeth. Everyone Snoop Dogg turned into a dog? In the video, sure. Yeah. A Doberman, I believe. Yeah, it was pretty fucking Yeah, that cool. wasn't real. Oh. <laughs> Just letting you know. <laughs> You're talking about it like it was fucking real. <laughs> and there it is. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher, for the clarity. Yeah. I, I, I really I felt was, like it was necessary. Was, you might not have been wrong to say it. 
<laughs> wow. Oh my god. I was gonna go on to be like, yeah. Remember man, that documentary remember that with dude? Snoop? <laughs> <laughs> remember that cartoon with that fucking, horror organization? Oh, man. The guy was a Holy reptile. Shit. Fucking Snoop turned into a dog. All right. Well, I mean, dude, like, dude, dog boys of summer, man. They're out there in the fields. That's how it the probably desert, transformed, dude. though. Because if you <laughs> recall that video, I don't remember which song it was. It was definitely like the early to middling days of morphing technology. Which I thank God I wasn't in high school for because that would have made my life a living hell. I already got bad enough shit for metamorphic rock. But that aside completely, um, the the way that technology worked, it was impressive at first when you saw a face blend into another. But after a while, it just got grating and and just poor. And so it never felt authentic. It It didn't have like that gritty sort of Rick Baker, American Werewolf in London, Rob Bottin howling, like bone crunching, you know, bladder effect, latex stretching feel of a body changing. Nah, man, Snoop just turned into a Doberman as well. But the way this kid changes into the black dog with the, the same, fluffy tail. It's the same way. It's, it feels like it was yeah, that quick. Just, yeah, that it's just like morphing technology. Yeah. And that does belittle the experience a little. I'd still be shitting my pants. I'd still be booking. Don't I mean, help Gomez. Dude, if, if if one of you turns into a fucking cat, I'm going to be like, the fuck? Sure. All right, whoa. But that's a friend. Weird. That's a dear friend, not just a weird semi-rapey. I was going to say, if it's a fucking douchey guy turns into a dog, you get a fucking good dog. And just because you've known him since elementary school. Call the dog school. catcher. Oh. <gasps> Call the dog catcher. It's a tiny town. Everyone goes to school Some, in the same place. I, right. I bet you there's a dog shelter you can throw his ass in. Be like, ha, dog prison. There you go. Uh, but then he'll just turn back and then get out. Because you can't keep a boy in dog prison. It's one thing you learn. You can't keep a in dog. civics class. You can't keep a dog right. prison in a boy. What? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> We're don't not even let him have it. Don't you, that would be a <laughs> don't even try. Yeah, terrible painting. Like I don't even like the images that pop in my head. No, it's very Hieronymus Bosch esque. It really yeah. is. All right, our final case, Robert. Moving on. <sighs> Indeed, our final case, as Mark mentioned, was presented in Amy and Bill Lancaster's nineteen no twenty nineteen. Excuse me, it wasn't nineteen anything. Documentary Paranormal Bigfoot. Now I would recommend this to Mark. I would not recommend this to Chris. Okay. I would recommend this to anyone out there that wants to see an alternative point of view on Bigfoot. It's got interesting bits. Okay. I found myself enjoying it, um, despite the fact that I really want Bigfoot to be a bona fide biological corporeal animal. Oh, is this a shaman? Yeah. <sighs> There's elements of that, yeah. Okay, all right, cool. There's shamans, like there's weird things. This is slightly different, but this was one of the stories incorporated into that documentary. You can use your crystals okay. and your 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 unguents. What are those? Your oils? Yeah. Yeah, and you can get those the Sasquatch. That's not how it works. I don't you, think you, you have never tried. Have you? You never. No. I okay. Can't. I don't have crystals or unguents. I mean, you could have lied. You could have sigiled the foot. Uh, dude, how dare you? Right. This is, a, pod- the foot, this is a podcast of truth. How dare you? You're right. Things that exist. How Unimpeachable you? truth. Yeah, I've not done I'm this. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I've not done you've, this. You've passed, sir. <laughs> Move on. All right. Paranormal Bigfoot. Yeah. Here so, we go. so here we are. Interesting documentary. I recommend it to anybody, even skeptics, because what the fuck? Know what they're talking about, at least. In the same way, I would enjoy a flat earth documentary for the shits and giggles. Okay, so- Amy and Bill Lancaster, 2019 documentary, Paranormal Bigfoot, and it was it detailed a truly peculiar experience that was described by the co-proprietor of the Expedition Bigfoot, the Sasquatch Museum in Blue Ridge, Georgia, a Bigfoot researcher named David Bacara. So he was told this story, the guy who runs the museum, okay. and he retold it in this documentary. I've heard of this guy before. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. I've seen him in a bunch of Bigfoot docs. Yeah, same, same. According to David, he is often approached by some of the thousands of visitors who patronize the museum who want to share with him their personal encounters with the massive hairy hominid. Could be a hominoid. We'll see what it is when they kill it or capture it. I'm not rooting for the death. I'm just saying if a trucker hits it and we know. There you go. The particular, this particular encounter that he reported was related to him at the former site of the museum in Cherry Log, Georgia. And what a great name for a town. Cherry Log. Cherry Log. Mm. And involved a gentleman in his 60s who approached him with his wife, son, and grandchildren in tow. Evidently, the entire family had driven up from an undisclosed site in southern Georgia in order to recount to David a particularly odd experience that had occurred to the man when he was just 17 years old back in 1975. Though David would admit that he had difficulty believing the tale at first, the seriousness of the experiencer's tone combined with the rapt attention of his family finally convinced him that whatever the truth may have been, this man believed every word he was telling him. 
David also noted that what made the family's respect for the man and his story so compelling was the fact that in his personal experience, most family members simply roll their eyes or make embarrassed and condescending expressions behind the backs of those reporting their encounter. But this group earnestly supported their patriarch, no matter how outlandish his account may have been. And have no doubt, this case is truly and deeply nestled in the realm of high strangeness. The second thing David noticed was that even decades after the fact, the man still seemed disturbed by this brief yet terrifying brush with the unknown. Although a specific location was not cited, the eyewitness claimed that the incident took place in Georgia, not far from Cherry Log, near the southern edge of the Appalachians. The man stated that he lived on a farm in a remote rural region of Georgia. With not much to do on the weekend evenings except hang out with other local kids, the teenager hopped into his van, which presumably had an airbrushed Valkyrie riding astride a white tiger on a rainbow. Yeah. At least I'm assuming that's all 70s vans. Fuck yeah. And picked up a group of schoolmates, an unnamed boy, a pair of sisters, and another boy, a farm kid who lived nearby and whom he considered a friend, even though they didn't know each other very well. As a gaggle of hormonal teens is wont to do, the group decided to drive into the mountains and park at an isolated overlook. One of the sisters sat in the shotgun seat while the other girl and boy sat in the back with the farm kid wedged between them on the bench-like back seat. Not surprisingly, they had beer in the van, but the man insisted that they hadn't so much as cracked a single brew when their run-in with the unfathomable occurred. Not long after they parked at the Overlook, the teens were chatting about school gossip and whatever passed for memes in those heady pre-cell phone days of dirt stashes, Leonard Skinnerd, lingering bell-bottoms, and burgeoning disco. The man claimed that they had only been parked for a couple of minutes, during which time his focus was naturally on the girl sitting next to him, when he was suddenly startled by a raucous kerfuffle in the back seat. No one uses kerfuffle anymore. No, man. Severely underused, man. We should be bringing it back. Hell yeah. Done. Yeah, Yeah, there it is. Whirling around to see what the rumpus was all about, the man claimed to have been dismayed by the sight before him. The girl and the boy on either side of the seat were screaming hysterically, struggling to open the van doors, while the farm kid in the middle had been mysteriously replaced by a hulking, hairy, eight-foot-tall giant. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm just watching Chris the soul leave his body. Hold on. <laughs> He's going to ascend to heaven. Chris told Jesus I said hi. You got a board for that, dude. Okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Fascinatingly, the man swore that when he looked at the expression on the ape man's face, it appeared to be just as shocked and confused as the terrified kid sitting next to it. No one had any idea where this monolithic man beast had come from or what had happened to the farm kid. Fucking farm kid, dude. Don't trust farm kid, man. You can't. God, that's one of those like OG Thor scenarios where you know, he's the doc. He's the doc. Doc Blake doc with the cane. Blake. Yeah. 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 He's yeah, like, oh, dude. Or you know, whatever. And then fucking. Uh, no, he's fucking. Kid must said the wrong thing. Corn. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Bigfoot shows up. <laughs> like, son of a bitch. It happened again. God damn, damn you farm kid. Get back here. All right. (laughs) The man claimed that he was about to jump out of the rocking van himself, but when he grabbed the handle, the dome light popped on and the bulky behemoth suddenly vanished, and in its place was the befuddled farm kid. Oh, shit, it turned back. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, God. The still panicked teens were shrieking, asking him what had happened. One was convinced that they had been the victim of an ingenious pre-David Blaine caliber prank. But the farm kid claimed to have no idea what they were going on about and could not understand why suddenly everyone was so upset with him. It was as if he hadn't realized that he'd been gone at all, making it at least a minor mercy that he hadn't suddenly appeared in a cave full of Sasquatch to their mutual terror and chagrin. So he didn't end up with a bunch of Bigfoot or in the forest not knowing what was going on while the right. Bigfoot shockingly turned there. Some weird switcheroo. Yeah. It's strange. Right, right. He just was not there and then couldn't understand why everyone was so pissed and fucking freaking out. Like, and at this point, you got to know two teenage boys in the backseat with only one available girl. They're just buying, hating each other, trying yeah. to be funnier, doing whatever. I don't know how farm kids flirt, but I'm sure it's very effective. And fucking. It's got to be corn. Oh, it's got to be corn. It's, corn it's always corn. <laughs> Wheat and corn. And then suddenly, you know, he, everyone's like, what the fuck did you do? How'd you pull this off? What's going on? He's like, I don't yeah, know what, what happened, dude. Yeah. All right. 
Though David Bakara's first instinct was to inwardly scoff at this account, the old man's sincerity kept his mind open to the possibility that the story he was hearing was an actual account of a real event. The man continued by saying that the commotion, understandably, quashed any desire the teenagers had to throw back a few and exchange a smooch or two in this all-too-isolated spot with a potential warefoot. <laughs> And the decision was made to go back to town, almost certainly dropping the farm kid off first thing to avoid any repeat performances. Do you just leave the farm kid there, though? You're like, look, farm kid, sorry. No, you got to get farm kid a ride home. I don't know, man. You're in the Appalachians, man. What what if he turns Bigfoot again and tries to kill you? No, he's farm kid. He knows his way around this Farm kid, Bigfoot might seek revenge he could get right. out of the car but like farm kid we love you but this is not good for any of us no i you. think you suck up to farm kid yeah you do really dude he might be under a hulk. threat of potential death i think he might have to be like he farm might kid. he might kill you his family of bigfoot might kill you <laughs> okay. he might be a true warefoot and also you might need I an ally <laughs> dude i love that warefoot shout out betty a listener of ours, of ours betty where she's got where everything what up hell yeah yeah dude <laughs> all right well i i say farm kid it's got to walk home, but that's just me. Yeah, wow. Okay. You're, you're making enemies. <laughs> no, I'm, I, this is for farm kids' own good. Wow. You won't fuck the snake, dude? No, it's for your own <laughs> you good. Won't fuck don't a put snake, it on other people. Dude, dude what's wrong? You, I you don't guys even know wanna, who you are. are you guys going to fuck a snake, dude? <laughs> is that what you're Maybe talking? not is a snake, hot? dude. Do I like it? <laughs> yeah. Do I like it? <laughs> I mean, how cool is he? <laughs> Man, a species, a fucking look, he's a species. Fucking, over here. Just I love the fact that you guys everything. embrace the fact that you're like, I'm gonna fuck snake, dude. Like, oh, fuck, oh, you, oh, you won't? Yeah, I will. You don't I'll know do the it half of it. <laughs> there you go. Wait till you read my conclusion. Fucking wine dine in sixty fucking nine, snake, dude. There you go. Hey, hey you never know. After th- after the incident, the man claimed that he and his neighbor spoke infrequently and never again hung out. But he never forgot that fateful night when his world and those of three other teenagers and a fifth very confused boy, talking about Farm Kid himself there, were forever changed by their glimpse behind the veil into a much deeper and potentially much darker reality. In this case, as in so many others, we are left with many more questions than answers. First and foremost, did this unnamed farm kid, and I'm sorry I keep calling him farm kid, he didn't have a real name, so that's just what came up, instantaneously transform into a not-so-bucolic Bigfoot, or did he switch places with, in what may be some sort of inexplicable example of broad-spectrum quantum entanglement, (laughs) with a nearby Bigfoot that was peacefully frolicking among the trees when it suddenly found itself in a van full of shrieking teens, a situation that was likely every bit as traumatizing for for it as it was its human counterparts. So again, I mean, don't, those are only two options. Who knows what other ones are? He instantaneously transformed into a Bigfoot. He, in, in you know, high strains science methods, switched places briefly with a Bigfoot. Right. Okay. There's probably other things that could have happened. I don't know what. Yeah, at the moment, I, I can't. I'm not. Can't really dig. I mean, into quantum that entanglement, weirdness. dude. Fucking. That's what like, like Michio Kako talks about. That shit, right? That's. I mean, all well with a particle, not yeah. necessarily a full quantum physics. <laughs> that's what I mean by like broad spectrum. <laughs> bigger. Nah, dude. If you uh, call him up and be like, dude, like, yeah, the, the other off. day, I think I, I I brought up the reference. Like, what if what if this was an example of quantum, you know, phenomenon on a Newtonian scale? Now there are no examples of it that we know of at all. Yeah, yeah, period. Right. Farm boy. Far, far, or, I'm sorry. Farm kid could be the first one. One of the first. I wonder if farm, farm kid and dog boy hang out. That'd be weird. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. And fucking werewolf girl. Oh. Well, what if all Bigfoots really are this? They're just fucking people that bam from the Bigfoots. Oh, that'd be interesting. You don't know that. It would make my day. <laughs> I, I'm it on, would make sense. I'm on why board. You, they're not. They're hard to catch. Yeah. There's no scat. You know why? Because it goes in the toilet. But then, why wouldn't we have the missing time phenomenon as associated with alien abduction? With like maybe, maybe Bigfoot transform me. Maybe they know about it. They know what. Oh, they, they do. know, and they yeah. they're yeah, not going right, to help themselves. Right. It's, yeah, it's, it's I'm how not they they don't know. They know. It's how they integrate into society. That's how they he just, get. He just doesn't know yet. That's how they get the new Jordan fours is by doing. This. It's like an mm-hmm. and it's like yeah. a Highlander thing, and like they they sense <gasps> the new uh, Bigfoot. Yeah, you just you're born that way. Dude, is there so a, it's sort of like a team and then where gonna, your dad has to give you the fucking yeah, speech, yes. the family lineage. Yes, that's what Bigfoot are. Dude. I'm convinced now. 
Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Fuck you. Fuck you. It, it's fuck more you. like Highlander. You're just born right. one and you, you bamf in the wind. And, team uh, fucking. Michael J. Fox and his foot. fucking dad come Join out. Join us. Help you. Oh, fuck. Join no, us. No, I'm not ready. Join and us. I still Venom think they could team. be primates and no. or early nah. hominids. Nah. It's already been disproved. It has not. It has. In no way, shape, or form. I think Chris did. Oh, my God. You motherfuckers. Let's let's talk about the moon. Oh, the alleged moon? You fucker. Don't even get me Never get over it. Don't even get me started about the planet. Your techno beat is not a way to win an argument. Just yeah. for the record. <laughs> yeah. yeah, middle fingers and a techno the, beat. Yeah, I know. Debate it, over. It works. Try that in a court. Yeah. I feel like you're just going to get kicked <laughs> out. And or jail time. <laughs> I, I love that picture oh objection. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. I'm going to hold it to the, the, the end. Let's, let's, let's finish this fucker out. All right. Whatever the answer may be. This case and hundreds of similar accounts, if not thousands, indicate that in many cases, humanity may only be skin deep. And in our own day-to-day lives, there's every chance that someone we interact with, be they the Amazon delivery person, the friendly mom at the local preschool, or even the cute bartender at the local pub, may not be what they seem. For some, this this may mean that they ought to be very wary about those with whom they engage, carefully monitoring them for any inhuman antics. For others, it may just open new vistas on reality. Perhaps, at one point or another, many of us have loved or been loved by those who we might be tempted to identify as monsters, meaning that maybe our collective definition of what a monster is is misplaced and we might have to consider a more expanded view of those with whom we both peripherally and intimately share our lives. In the end, if we truly believe that neither race nor gender should be any impediment to love, then who are we to deny the same opportunities to the intelligent and engaged beings with whom we share our reality. You are totally going to fuck. See? Totally fuck, fuck a monster. <laughs> yeah, you're going to totally fuck, fuck Do your techno me. beat. <laughs> fucking monsters, <laughs> fucking <laughs> monsters, <laughs> fucking <laughs> monsters <laughs> all the time. <laughs> it's going to okay. happen. All right. Well, <sighs> okay, it's a lot here. <laughs> it's quite a video. Okay. So uh, this could be. This could be. Let's say that this is like you mentioned in the in, in the beginning intro here. That this could have this could be some kind of like camouflage technique where they they, they could just be some some sort of species living amongst us to have this ability to camouflage themselves to blend into society. Right. Because if they are like you know obviously we're humans or whatever. If let's say that it's you know a bigfoot or a lizard person or or, or a dog man or whatever, they're obviously like in the minority and they're like we're gonna we're gonna blend in with the humans and because we, we want to go about and do our shit and get iPhones and fucking you know do reels and shit on Instagram. We want to be a part of this thing. We want to sure. be out. I mean, we want this, to be doing it. This we is want the, to go to Target. This is the society you want to live in. If you so want, this is how they products. This is how they get easy in. access to food. This is what they do. Shelter. Sure. This is how they get. So, in. what do you mean by camouflage exactly? It, to me, it sounds like like because I mean, a physical thing isn't really a camouflage. It's an actual transformation. Yeah, you're fi- if you're physically bigger than these you were before. That's not just like. But none of these were like Rob was saying. They weren't some weird transformation. They're just all of a sudden, boom. They're just one minute. They're there. One minute. They're just. Like, so nah. here's the thing. I'm We're, thinking like a piece of technology. Let, let's let's break this down really quickly, though, before we get into that aspect. Okay. We're dealing with a very different phenomenon here. When we're dealing with what seem to be skinwalkers, like the kid that identifies as such. Right. Um, and uh, also uh, perhaps the werewolf girl okay. in the beginning. Um, then you're dealing with a very st- uh, specific mythology and or... Um, uh, you know, literal telling of a of a different way of living, a more mystical way of living, okay. more in tune with nature. Now, obviously, it, it, you know, um, shamans that become skinwalkers, are, it's supposed to be a very dark thing. Like also, you know, becoming a wendigo, like it's not something you want to do. It's not something that's optimal. Right. At least based on what I know of the lore, it's never like. And this person shape shifts for good. You know, it's that's not part of it. Yeah. But if it is part of your lore, that's a, a very specific thing, and that becomes more of a mystical, magical maybe high science that we that that's so advanced and so uh foreign to our way of thinking and you know in in you know the way western science has developed that we can't comprehend it the reptile person that's a different breed of cat literally a different breed of snake you like 
I don't know if it were if it's high technology. If you're talking about alien reptoids that have like super tech that allows them to change, like you're suggesting. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we could make it could be a little bit of both here. It could be, and the and the Bigfoot situation. I mean, that again, it could be like some crazy. The kid there could have been like a crazy physicist down the fucking you know down in Cherry Log who was right. testing something and didn't realize that he was flippity dipping too fucking doing the old Bigfoot switcheroo. And and fucking and maybe even thought his experiment was a failure. I mean, who I mean, the fuck knows? Because yeah, the, the kid didn't know. I mean, mm. the rest of them they kind of like transform and they they kind of have an idea, you know, like dog boy runs away or boy dog or whatever fucking jet. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, I I was okay. So maybe there's a bit of both there. Maybe this could be something. So I'm just saying a you, piece of tack. One answer can't cover everything. Right. Like, yeah. I and mean, if you spoke to not in these, no, a, a chicory Apache. Uh, elder, they would likely just tell you this is a part of our culture. Okay, this yeah. is magic as we believe it. And which, and if that's the case, that's kind of cool. You know, right. that's kind of dope. Where you're like, oh hey, it's, you know, fucking Bobby's a skinwalker, and he just randomly turns into a fucking parrot. Like, right. oh cool, dope. You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, sure. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. The, yeah, you're right. I mean, I'm assuming skinwalkers can turn into like whatever they want to. Is it like an animorph? Oh, remember the animorphs? I do. Yeah. Actually. Rose well, covers actually, are crazy. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know though. Like pelts or feathers of different animals. Like I've definitely heard them turning into crows, ravens, foxes, wolves. Okay. So cool. I suppose it, it could turn into a snake. They yeah. Could turn into, if you could turn, if you could determine what you want to turn into, that would be fucking. Dope. I do believe that's part of the lore. Like I'm gonna be an otter, and you're fucking boom marks an otter. You can swim fast. Yeah, dude. Fish well. Yeah. I don't know what else? Make otters. Frolly noises. Yeah. Oh, be they do cute. sound so cute. They do be sound cute, cute, but they're nasty biters. Yeah, dude. Don't trust an otter. Fuck shit up. Mm-hmm. All right. So I guess if yeah, you know what? That that's one angle right there is if this is just a part of their culture, a part of their magic. Fucking dope, man. They do it, but. Yeah, I guess they got caught transforming, which is kind of going to probably be a problem. Although it sounds like everyone is kind of like, like, hey, you know, whatever. Just disregard it. Pay no attention to, you know, Deb turning into a dog. It's no big deal. Yeah, so Deb turning into a dog. So we'll just call her Deb. Yeah, Deb. What up, Deb? Um, outside of the factory in, you know, yeah, wherever. you know. Um, I think it was Catoosa, Oklahoma. None of these cases made any real... S- th- n- there's n- no violence. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. no. Yeah, yeah. They just all turn and yeah. go like, you just witness them. You're like, oh. People are like, what the fuck? Yeah, fuck. Shattered the, the realities. The closest thing came <laughs> when fucking... Violence right there. You know, touchy McScumbag was like being real aggressive right. with Gomez, trying to get her to come home with him and, and not in a cool way. And then I don't know how turning into a fucking dog is supposed to help. Yeah, that one doesn't make sense because unless like I say he was, walker, and he was sudden... drunk and couldn't control his abilities and just got sloppy. And I mean, I guess if you turn into some giant fucking dire wolf like from Game of Thrones or something, you'd be like, whoa, fuck. But he's just like, I'm a fucking dog. And Maybe. Like, like a uh, yeah. Skinwalkers have to be really. I mean, it, you got to be kind of imposing. At least Farm Kid turned it into a fucking Sasquatch unwittingly. He just fucking bamps into a fucking thing. I'm just thinking, like, if you if you do have this ability to transform, and now think of it this way, if it's like a psychological thing or a psychic thing, or even if you're just projecting, like an image, a screen image, okay, and you're trying to be there, like, you have to be so on your game all the time, it's got to be A, exhausting, and B, kind of a terrible way to live, and, and, and if you let your guard down, or if in the case of, like, I'm not saying that this is how skinwalkers work, but in the case of the the kid in Dulce, like maybe getting drunk, you know, t- slipping into your natural form or your alternate form is like a form of whiskey dick. Like you just lose control and right. you're just like, fuck, yeah. I'm this now. And I, and, and cause he didn't try to attack her strut around or like talk like, yeah, oh, no. now I'm a sexy dog boy, you know? He yeah. just was like, oh, fuck, <laughs> and ran away, you know, as if like shit. Yeah. I mean, but you know, if they do have like a, a, a glamour, but it might not be a thing they have to really. I mean, like a, a gecko or something just controlling your camouflage. Right. I, I feel like it's not an active or just like your heart beating. Like you you do it and it's there. And your body is. I mean, maybe. Part, if it's part of your physiological Oh, I like thing. This. Or maybe it takes years of training. No, Chris like is making. Shaolin yeah. Block. Chris I, I is mean, making sense out of this now. I mean, it could be something they don't really have to constantly think about once it's on or whatever. You know, or if, it, like you said, if it is something psychic where you can just make, make people perceive what you are. If you're just whatever this animal is and you just make everybody, you know, like I'm actually a giraffe, but I'm like, no, I'm Mark and you guys think I'm Mark all the time, right. but I'm actually a fucking sweet, like mid-sized giraffe. It could be like driving or riding a Mid- bike. Well, it's small. Like, well, it's small it's overwhelming and daunting at first. You have to focus on everything all the time. Your heightened awareness is constantly there. You're very free. At least I was when yeah, I first yeah. started driving because it's oh, like yeah. a coffin made of steel that's waiting to kill and kill you. But then after a while, 
it's, it's like, just yeah. It's like you just like second walking nature, or breathing, yeah. like there you, you say. So maybe maybe it's like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Who knows? But 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 it could be technology. It could be a glamour. It mm-hmm. could be as Chris said earlier, transforming humans. Like they could be human. Like their species could be human, but they could have a mutation. That allows them to become something more canid. Okay. But I mean, maybe werewolfism, like anthropy, mm-hmm. is is a disease or a, a genetic condition right. rather than uh, you know some sort of paranormal affliction. Okay. Very rare, you know. Um, yeah. Probably very difficult to control. But at this point, seeing as legends of it go back to like you know Romulus and Remus and and, yeah. and maybe even older. They would have had uh, protocols established long since generationally mm-hmm. that will allow them to stay incognito, that, you know, communities that protect each other. I mean, if the Vatican, yeah, it's a terrible well, analogy, can protect their fucking scumbag priest for all those years because, you know, they have tons <clears throat> of money and tons of resources, then any group that's been around twice as long probably has equal resources and they could probably like conceal deaths, um, pay off families, you know, do whatever they got to do to like keep sh- shit hidden. You know, the same mythology yeah. is around vampires too, you know? Uh, so who knows? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. There's, I mean, there's mythologies of where like they have Subculture. the money, but then there's the time there's ones where they don't. Sure. Right? So they're underground and sneaky or they're not like there's, they're, they own the mob or something. You know what I mean? Right. There's a whole yeah. different. Uh, and like that Patreon Mark brought uh, a little bit ago about the, the reptilians living next door that just lived in squalor and ate raw meat and were weird neighbors. Oh, yeah, yeah the then sn- took off. The snakehead people. Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, it, th- there could be different branches. There could be the elite, just like the no, one yeah. percenters yeah. of right. earthlings that live like w- in ways we can't fathom. And then, a, you know, a general middle class and then people living in abject poverty. It could yeah, be the exact sure. same thing. But but I don't know. But assuming this is real, I do believe there's lots of different phenomenon, some of which are they, they only transform under certain circumstances, maybe like the dog girl and the skinwalker. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe that guy after, you know, he had sex and did whatever, he had to like moisten his skin do like some shit. Maybe he was more ichthyoid than reptoid and just oh, needed the water. You gotta put your lizard dick and, away. And, yeah. And, you gotta yeah, tuck yeah. it back in. You gotta tuck it back in the yeah. folds. There you go. You know, we all saw the shape of water. We know how that works. Oh, theoretically. Yeah, weird quoculoids or whatever, right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Weird weird snake dicks. Lizard dick, yeah. Yeah, lizard dick, yeah. Good old lizard dick. So but 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 I believe we're working with different phenomenon. But I do think there's a compelling case to be made for, you know, yes. Truly primal unknown cryptids mm-hmm. that are like the Orn Pendek or things that live in the ocean that are just animals that are undiscovered. Right. Euphonauts, things that are from outer space that can maybe pilot ships or just happen to be, you know, traipsing along in them and, and you know, come and visit and whatever that are monstrous in appearance to our eyes. Mm-hmm. And then other ones that are either human beings that have mutated or creatures that have co-evolved or maybe been here even longer than us that have managed to find ways to integrate in our society. Because if you want to live a comfortable life, basically there's humanity and no other choice. Either you live in a cave or a dirt den or a tree and you're hunting constantly and foraging or you live as a human being and get to shop on Amazon and fucking have a car and a house. Do you want the fucking, you want to go see Taylor Swift? You want the new shoes? You want the fucking iPhone? You want to go to, you want to go to Target and Starbucks, dude? Who can blame them? You want pizza. pizza. Oh, you want pizza. And you want pizza. pizza. And you don't want to raccoon that shit out of a dumpster all the time. You want to be able to order a goddamn fresh pizza. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, we fucking nailed it. Sometimes you want to fuck a person, so you yeah. got to look like a person. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I yeah. mean, you should probably tell them nine times out of ten. I agree. <laughs> Be like, just so there you know, there are consent elements there that I'm uncomfortable with. Okay, but yeah. if like a super attractive snake lady came out to me and, and and she was very cool and we got along, I can't say I'd say no. Okay, well, I mean, that's you, you and Chris are in that boat. It's cool. I, I respect your decisions. I'm here to support you. In, in your new lifestyle of fucking snake people. Oh, there's nothing new about it. Oh, oh, oh good. I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> that you're fine. Yeah, I don't think I, there's a point where I ever would have denied a hot snake person. No. Okay, I'm just... I'm, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm no. I'm glad that we can be open and honest as friends. Thank you all so very much for joining us, the Kryptonaut Podcast. Robert, oh, we learned a lot today. Um, some Patreon shout outs, buddy. We got oh, we got fuck yes. shout outs. Yes. I hope there's some monsters in there. No, there yeah, I mean, there could be. You never know. Beginning with, and God bless you all. For your support angel g roca thank you angel dino dna oh change uh, dino changer I, I, oh maybe. maybe dna yeah okay crystal thank you crystal math adept thank you math adept brad riser what up brad gnome rotundo <laughs> it's an awesome name i love it <laughs> it's so cool Kevin Heyman. Thank you kevin kelly rossi what up kelly ryan dona what up ryan 
Harmon Laniger. Thank you, Harmon. Robert, we have a correction. We mm-hmm. got an email today. I knew we fucked it up. I knew I fucked it up. There's yeah. no we. Uh, I know it was me. It's okay. Let's do this correction. All right. The island of Dr. Moreau Amaris. Moreau Amaris. Moreau Amaris. Thank you, and thank you for the correction. Thank you so very much. And uh, for the longest time, I believe you guys chastised me because I called it the island of Dr. Monroe. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> and I just... I still joyously think of it as such. Yeah. Every I time. still... Yeah, I awesome. think... And you know how like, like there's always like a knockoff movie, like Transmorphers or whatever, sure. oh, yeah, yeah. Transformers. Now it's the island of Dr. Monroe. Of course. Oh, there okay, you yeah. go. There it is. So... There's a correction. Thank you all so very much. Patreon support. We appreciate it. Patreon.com slash Podcast. Links for that are in the description of this podcast. As mentioned at the top of the show, Kryptonauts versus Humanoids. Friday, May 26, 8.30 p.m. Come play Kryptonauts versus Humanoids. As mentioned on Friday, May 26 to 8 uh, 30 p.m. It's a game similar to the one that you might be familiar with, but with custom cards based off of phrases from the podcast. Players beware. It is not safe for work and bring yourself a drink. It's a good time. Dirty McGurdy. You also need your mic if you want to be involved. You need to have a microphone active to do it. That makes so, sense. Yeah, so that all that is available. All of that is available over at patreon.com slash kryptonaut podcast. Um merch. We've got some merch available. Yeah. Kryptonautmerch.com. Wearing one right now wearing the kryptonite anime you are. t-shirt oh, you are i yeah. love and it yesterday i was wearing the venezuelan littlefoot's t-shirt hot damn both of those are available again at kryptonitemerch.com uh as always we have our t public shop hellerspace.com check it out there all kinds of merch uh we will have another sale happening well not another sale but a sale happening at kryptonitemerch.com that there's going to be a, 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 a memorial day thing happening we're just going to try to nail down the the, the, the percentage and how long it's if it's gonna be like a weekend or whatever so we'll get you guys information on that uh as always the social medias the instas and the twitters and the facebooks were there we're doing it hanging out making things happen so Heck check us yeah. out there and uh, thank you all for your continued support we appreciate it and um and if you're a patron join yeah. the discord yes can't can emphasize right. it enough if you are on the patreon join the discord it is a super fucking fun time it's awesome there so uh so yeah there it is thank you all so very much and gentlemen mm-hmm. we'll be talking with you both very soon. Yeah, and Not minutes. the audience, but you two. Yeah. 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 Con- constantly. I yeah. love it. If we weren't in contact often, I would be sad. Well, I called the chicken be, yeah. out on both of you. You do. I do. You're you, very you good do. about that. I really get, sometimes I'm like, I haven't heard a goddamn thing from any of these two fuckers in the last three fucking days. We're not as, we're not as diligent as you. <laughs> yeah, I no, try, no. though. I'm like, I ask Nick, I'm like, Is everything, have you seen anything on Facebook? Has anyone posted anything? Yeah, anything I know. going on? Is there a thoughts and prayers? Is there, is there a vigil? What happened? Is there a vigil? Yeah. Are they okay? Yeah. How's Rob's skin? <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. I, man, your Jesus fucking Christ, skin has me so goddamn I know. Don't, t- don't talk about it. Yeah, no, don't. Because no, if no, the thing no. fucking Listening. Oh, like no. You lose your it's, fucking arm or something, it's, we're fucked. It's my own skinwalker. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Literally. Oh, it no, is. I'm, I'm, I'm really getting better. Oh, not God. to jinx it. Touching right. wood. Yeah, yeah, all right. Well, now we've jinxed everything there. We're talking to you soon. Bye. God damn it. All right, bye. Bye.